Anaplan is a tricky thing to demo in terms of OpEx because it can be done so many different ways. So whenever I demo a piece of Anaplan functionality for OpEx, what I like to do is show the wide palette of what is possible. So that includes different planning methodologies, like something that is driver-based, something that uses historical actuals to generate a, a run rate, something that uses drivers, something that uses various spread methodologies. So what I'm gonna do in walking through this today is show just a few of those different options. And some of the dashboards may not even be our best practice recommendation of how to actually do that sort of planning. Uh, but we've put together this demo in order to show the art of the possible and all of those things that are really possible within Anaplan. So I'm gonna start on our COGS planning dashboard and walk through from here. I think, I think this is a good place to start because it's very basic P times Q. So we have unit costs for various items broken out in our, our hierarchies in here, our, our planning version, our year, our regional selector, and then our product list. So by our, our various product lists here within Europe, we have items 14 through 18 shown here. And by quarters, what are the unit costs for those items? Very simply, just P times Q. So that's one option. If we move on to G&A planning, we start to involve a bit more of a, a driver scenario here. So we're using, we're showing up top here for planning for GNA. Um, within this section, we have software maintenance, utilities, office supplies, networking, and then other. I think this is a pretty appropriate example for this segment of accounts. So for a software maintenance, if we don't want to go to the level of actually planning line by line or having ZBB type of components, software maintenance by using previous years of actuals, two previous years actuals, and just applying a growth rate on top of that. So if we anticipate that this year is going to have higher software spend, maybe a moving towards a more of a remote workplace was the catalyst for this increase in the software spend, we can plan it here. Um, and then within that yearly growth drivers, we can apply various spreads. So if we wanted that to just be flat throughout the quarters, if we wanted to apply more of a weighted quarterly spend, perhaps that's towards the end of the year where we're um, maybe have some extra budget left over and want to apply more spend weighted towards the back half of the year when we take on more IT initiatives and then can apply some trending on top of that. So layering on to the you know, previous example, this takes an account, uses the previous year's actuals, applies some growth rates on top of that, and then some trending towards just a, a yearly growth rate on top of that. Of course, with all of these examples, we can generate an override if, if you know, if we like the previous year's actuals, we want to apply our growth rate on top of that, but that doesn't look quite right, then we can just apply an override and that becomes our, our final expense. Uh, I'm actually going to go down here. Similar kind of example in R&D to the, to the previous example that we showed. So this one takes a previous period's actuals and then by our different planning version, chooses what, how to drive the, the out year forecast for that. So on this selection here, we have research selected, and then we choose last 12 months expense for the budget. And then for the forecast, we plan it a little bit differently. So we, we planned it by a percentage of sales. If this, again, if this looked a little bit wonky here, so if we move this back to zero, then we get the original value here down for uh, this research component. Again, the, the example that I want to show on this R&D planning dashboard is just really overriding by month. Uh, so if we knew that there was going to be, you know, increased research spend in maybe these three months. Can just override here. Now the dashboard I want to spend most of the time on is t and &E planning. And what I like about this t and &E planning dashboard is that not necessarily really the, the actual process around how all of these budgets are built, but just the wide palette of what's possible in Anaplan here. So this first, the, the top module that we have here, this shows flights as a percentage of sales and then our forecast percentage. So it's, it's calculating behind the scenes within this cell, 
what is the percentage of sales that flights actually made up? So then we can use that number to push forward. If we think that flights are going to be, you know, accounting for COVID here, that there was going to be a lot less flight time, we move this number down by about a fifth. If we wanted to do things like involve, you know, even TSA flight numbers to determine what this, what this value could be, that that's possible in this kind of module. So the percentage of sales um, methodology is something that we see used pretty often. Um, oftentimes this would be in, in other areas where you see this is not necessarily in, in T&E, but maybe um, IT spend as a percentage of sales. Um, so top section here, this is showing the methodology for this is taking actuals that come in, calculating the sales, and then using previous actuals from flights to determine the value. And then just using a basic uh, input to determine for this account, what's the, what's the driver for this account. The next example on this dashboard, uh, there's also um, an input section for these drivers. So I'll, I'll show these actual items here on the right in a second, but we're making some assumptions here for low, medium and high uh, costs for airfare, car, hotel and per diem. And then just using this, so for sales ops, we've, we've inputted some specific examples. So this is, we have three conferences coming up. We plan these uh, in terms of number of trips, the period that they're going to fall in, the number of days that they're going to be, cost category, if there's going to be a car included. So we're starting to move here towards um, more of a, a ZBB type of slant for this. So planning for a specific item rather than using drivers. In this example, we're combining a bit of both because we're using drivers to actually generate what the total cost of this trip is going to be. Um, but again, this just gives a flavor of combination of ZBB type of components with also using drivers to generate things that um, maybe don't want to be too exact on, but can make some assumptions around airfare cost, hotel, et cetera. This type of structure where there are individual line items that you can add. So here, this is an, a conference in Austin within sales ops. This type of structure where you're adding line item level detail, uh, or another way to refer to that is maybe subledger type of activity on the actual accounts or cost centers is very common in Anaplan. Another place that we see this is in CapEx planning, where new CapEx in initiatives are planned for in Anaplan, um, you know, you, and then all of the assumptions for that can be maintained at, at the actual line item level. So then here, this then rolls back up into, even though we're planning at that lowest level or line item level detail, that rolls up into our natural GL stream. So here we've got our individual items rolling up into flights, hotel, meals, transportation, other. And then this would roll up into a total expense forecast. At the bottom of this, we have a global events driver. So um, here we, we apply some very generic assumptions about the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, right? So, but the use case for this is that within ops, we can apply other types of global events that we just want to peanut butter spread um, or have some big impact event uh, within these individual cost centers. So to summarize this dashboard, at the top we have individual GL level activity that's calculated using a percent of sales and then generating a forecast using some inputs based on previous actuals. Uh, the roll up and actual budget versus actuals, forecast versus actual spend amount uh, in this summary module here. The ability to create and maintain assumptions by different GL categories, the ability to add beneath those GL or within those cost centers, different individual events. So incorporating components of ZBB and then at the bottom, applying a global um, layer or a global calculation on top of what's already been created. So I'm going through this, we've shown on COGS planning, this was P times Q types of inputs multiplied by whatever's coming in through our actuals. On GNA planning, we used more of yearly assumptions to take previous year's actuals and then just apply growth rates on top of that apply some spread on top of that or a curve to how that's actually going to get allocated throughout the time. Um, R&D planning, uh, same type of thing, just the ability to override any one of those planning mechanisms at that actual input level. And then on T&E, 
using a broader array of both calculations and then inputs as well as assumptions. Uh, and then finally, some, some global events on top of that. So that's about all that I wanted to show here for, for different ways that OpEx planning is possible. Uh, we hope that, you know, we look, we've seen quite a bit of examples of this and, and um, would look forward to the opportunity to discuss your cost planning with you. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, and I, I will just add to, you know, as we close here that, you know, as Stephen indicated, this is very much about art of the possible. And the beauty of Anaplan is that it can be customized for each of these, you know, line items in OpEx um, to plan whatever way you want to. And so if there's, you know, there's things that you're doing, you know, offline in Excel, you know, it can be encompassed, it can be encompassed all in one place and have the ability to look at different scenarios. Um, even though, you know, right now you may be planning T&E as an example of just trending and keeping it flat to last year, this allows you to, you know, also use more of a bottoms up perspective to add detail to what that plan is and to make to make yourself and your your business partner more comfortable with with where you're going with this and your final numbers. So thanks for thanks for joining us today. Um, hopefully this was helpful. And, and as Stephen mentioned, um, we look forward to to hearing from you and, and seeing how we can um, help your organization.